Hello, welcome to Lurgle Stories. My name's Logan, and I'm glad you're here. Before we get started with our book today, I'd like to say a big thank you to Austin Macaulay Publishers for giving us permission to read today's book. There's a link in the description box down below if you'd like to buy your own copy. Make sure to subscribe to Lurgle Stories so you don't miss any of these videos. If you did miss the last one, click on Lurgle Stories below and it'll take you straight to the channel where you can find any of our videos. Today's book is called Three Tales of George the Shark by Izzy Wilson. She was born in Banbury, Oxfordshire, married and had a daughter Louise before moving to Cornwall. She now lives in a small picturesque village in North Oxfordshire. After retiring through ill health, the idea of George came to her with the advent of grandchildren. Let's begin. George finds a friend. Just off the coast of Cape Town, there is a shipwreck on the seabed. Inside, there are broken crates with books, never to be read by children, except George. George is a shark. He loves looking at the pictures and then plays out what he has read. But today, he's bored. I'm bored, he says. I would love to have some friends. The humans who play by the shore just run away, shouting, Shark! Shark! and frighten me off. So he swims away from the shipwreck, looking for something to do. A little while later, he hears some noise. He swims slowly to where the noise is coming from and peers through some seaweed. Come out, I know you're in there, says the hammerhead shark. He starts pushing the coral reef about, hoping to find the squid he saw going in there. George swims up to him and says, What are you doing? The hammerhead spins around. What did you do that for, sneaking up on me like that? Sorry, says George, but I thought you might need some help. I can't get this squid out and I'm hungry. So George grabs him by the tail, turns him on his side and starts hitting the coral reef with the head of the hammerhead shark. Ouch! Ouch! he shouts. That hurts! Well, you are a hammerhead, so I'm using you as a hammer, says George. That's not funny. I have a black eye now. It doesn't look that bad, says George, trying not to laugh. Do you want to play? We could pretend to be pirates or cowboys, says George. No thanks said the hammerhead, holding his eye. Please, please play with me. I don't have any friends. They all swim away when they see me. Okay then, we can swim together and see if we can find anything to do. That's great, says George. By the way, what's your name? Mine's George. I don't have a name. Nobody has given me one. Right, says George. I will call you Alex. Why Alex? said the hammerhead. Well, says George, in one of the books I was reading, I read about Alexander the Great, so you are a great hammer. I got my name from George and the dragon. He slayed the dragon, so he was great too. So off they swim, looking for an adventure. George and Alex. George and Alex go out for a swim one day when George says, Do you fancy a race? What sort of race? says Alex. Well, we could race to that reef over there. It's not that far, says George. Alex takes a look at the reef and then back to George. Hmm, you're not going to cheat, are you? You usually do, 
says Alex. Me? Me cheat? How could you say such a thing? says George, with his fin on his heart. Well, you did before. You said we would go after three, and you went after two, says Alex. Oh, that. I forgot what came after two, so I just went, says George. Alex just shook his head. Okay, but this time I will count. So Alex started counting. One, two, three, and they swim off. When he gets to the reef, he finds that George isn't there. Great, says Alex. Now where has he gone? He swims around the reef, but there's no sign of him. So he swims back to where they had started from, calling out his name. When he gets so far along, he sees George's tail sticking out of a small reef. George, what are you doing? says Alex. Shush, says George. Just look at that. Alex looks in as well and sees a swordfish pretending to sword fight a mirror. The mirror must have come from a shipwreck. There are lots of shipwrecks where George and Alex live. After a while, George and Alex go up to the swordfish and ask what he's doing. Well, says the swordfish, I'm practicing for my fencing. You never know when you might need it. George and Alex look at one another and shrug. George says, We're just out for a swim and a race. Fancy joining us? I don't know, says the swordfish. I'm not used to having anyone to swim with. Come on, says Alex. It could be quite a laugh, especially with George here. You never know what he's going to do next. Okay then, says the swordfish. Might as well. I have nothing else to do. Off they went and had a great time. George was usually the winner in the races. Later on, George says, What's your name? I haven't got one, says the swordfish. Well, we will have to think of one then, says George. George and Alex are going through some names that they had seen in the books where they live. What about Alfred, says Alex. That's a good name. Or Arthur. Napoleon, says George. It reminds me of the French swordsman. Hey, that sounds good, says the swordfish. Napoleon sounds very posh. On guard, he says, as he pretends to fence with George. So, says George, do you fancy staying with us at our wreck? We could go on adventures together. They all look at one another and agree that they would. Tomorrow will be such a laugh, thought George. I have two great friends to play with. George, Alex and Napoleon George, Alex and Napoleon are out swimming and chasing each other around. They go out a bit further than normal and there are loads of fish swimming about. George says, let's have a bit of fun and chase the fish. They will think we want to eat them. That's a bit nasty, says Alex. Don't you think they have enough to worry about? Look up and you can see a boat up there. I bet it's got one of those horrible nets on it. Napoleon says, We had better get out of here. If those nets get thrown over, we could get caught as well. Just then, there's a loud noise and a large net comes down into the sea. All the fish swim as fast as they can. Get away or you'll be caught and taken on the boat, they say. As the net drags along the water, a lot of fish get caught. Help us, they shout. George, Alex and Napoleon just watch. They can't believe what their eyes are seeing. 
What shall we do? says Alex. We have to help them. But how? says Napoleon. We've got to think quickly. They'll be taking the net up onto the boat soon, says George. Think, think, says George, while he swims next to the net. I know. Napoleon, you cut the net with your sword, and Alex and I will distract the humans on board. Right, says Napoleon, as he goes off to cut the net. Stand back, he says. I'm going to cut the net so you can get out. Please hurry, they shout. George and Alex swim under the boat and come to the surface on the other side. They can see the humans getting ready for the fish. What shall we do, says Alex. We've got to get them to stop what they're doing and watch us. It will give Napoleon more time. We have to make a lot of noise, splash the water about, and we will chase one another around. So that's what they do. And the humans stop what they're doing and watch them. They, some even laugh. How much longer do we have to do this? says Alex. Dive down and see if you can see how Napoleon's getting on, says George. As Alex dives, George is still splashing about. He even gets close to the boat and splashes so hard that the humans get wet. He likes that. Alex comes back and says, It's nearly done. He'll come round to us when he's finished. Napoleon only has a small bit to cut, and then there is enough room for them to get out. Right, says Napoleon. Don't rush all at once or they will know what's happening. Okay, they all said. When the last one comes out, they all shout, Thank you, Napoleon! He swims to George and Alex. All done, he says. That's good, said Alex. How about getting the humans really wet, says George. We will swim really close to the boat and jump out of the water and splash down. The water will go over into the boat. So that's what they did. When they had swum a little bit away, they turned around and saw the humans looking really unhappy and wet. They did look funny. It was even better when they saw them dragging the empty net onto the boat. George, Alex and Napoleon gave each other a high five and swam off laughing. What a great day, thought George. Wasn't that good? They saved all of the fish. I think the fish were very, very, very lucky that George, Alex and Napoleon turned up to help them. Do you like sharks and fish? Maybe you have pet fish of your own. Maybe you have a pet shark. <gasps> what are your pet names? We'll see you next time. Have a good time. Until then. Bye bye.